Welcome to the Digital Monk Marketing Podcast, where we share marketing trends and tips as well as interviews to help keep you at the forefront of your industry and top of mind with your dream clients. Here's Monica with the Marketing Minute to share all of her latest industry updates with you. Today on the Digital Monk Marketing Podcast, Monica is back, which I'm so excited about. It seems like forever since we've had Monica on. And uh, Monica is going to be talking about internal marketing. So what is internal marketing, Monica? Yeah, it's great to be back. It's been a while. Um, Internal marketing is something I'm so passionate about. And it's because it's always overlooked in big organizations, small organizations. It is so valuable. And it's a conversation that has to be had internally. And this is why we are spending so much money to communicate our values, our missions, our promotions out to the outside world and and hope to get a new customer and increase our revenues. But what we often forget to do is communicate that to our internal team of what's happening, what we're communicating, what we stand for. All of those things that we want to tell everybody else, we fail to tell our internal team. Right. It's so true. Yes, and we leave them in the dark, uh, and and it's it's not a disrespect. It's it's because we don't feel like we have to, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is the biggest mistake. Yes, we're gonna dig right into this. We've talked about word of mouth and referrals and all of that kind of stuff in other podcast episodes. So I'm assuming internal marketing starts with you know your internal team understands the products or the services and loves and enjoys what's going on. They are your number one marketing department, right? They're your brand advocates, right? Yeah. And we oversee that. And and when we keep our internal employees happy and understand their needs and they understand our needs, we have this beautiful conversation and we have this beautiful natural brand that's emerging with the missions and the goals that we have in place. Mm-hmm. But that conversation has to happen. And there's certain things internally uh, as far as processes and employee recognition and so many other components that we need to consider when we are talking about internal marketing. So let's let's back up for a second. What is internal marketing? Internal marketing represents a set of activities that promote an organization's missions, objectives to its employees. Okay. So the employees understand the mission of the brand. What is the brand? What does the brand stand for? What are those brand promises? What are we trying to communicate to the outside world? What promotions do we have running? What is our busiest time of the year? All of these questions Generally, when I look at organizations, employees are left in the dark. It is generally the marketing person, the marketing department, and the general manager who are manifesting all of these communications. However, they're not taking it back to a roundtable with their employees. Right. So what does this do? This keeps your employees in the dark. They don't know what's happening. When customers are calling in and asking about all of this, um, these missions or, or um these promotions that we're advertising, they have no idea. Right. So now there's a disconnect between the customer calling the company Mm -hmm. and, 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 and wanting to know more about the information that they've read externally and the internal employee has no idea. So now the customer is calling and saying, do you have the right number? I just saw this. How do you not know about this? How do you not know about this? Yeah. (laughs) And I do. And so just imagine the customer's journey calling in or interacting with the brand And no one knows about this promotion that's been communicated everywhere else. Mm -hmm. You've lost that customer now because there's no trust. Yeah, totally, totally. And that's at a very, very basic level of of why internal marketing is so important. There's so many other benefits and um, getting your team all on the same page. However, it affects revenue. And that's what we're always looking at is how it's affecting revenue. So this is an easy problem to solve. It's, It's creating processes internally, communication processes, technical applications that you can use to keep your communication open between all departments and all employees and making sure that the messaging is always consistent between what you're telling your outside customers and what you're telling your employees internally. So a good marketing or a good internal marketing strategy will augment your external marketing campaigns. It will be a win-win for both of you because now you're streamlining your communication across all platforms. And employees start to feel a lot stronger sense of belonging within the organization because ultimately they understand what your what your goal is. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine a whole entire organization working towards a goal that they have no idea what it is? Right. And, <laughs> and it happens all the time. It totally does. It totally does. And I can, und- I can sort of see 
the bigger a business is say for example let's a retail chain like working on the shop floor versus like the working in the admin offices exactly like there's gonna there's there's gonna be disconnects but there shouldn't be but yeah also i can i can totally understand how when you understand what what's going on you're you feel more part of the business and part of the company and you want to be involved as opposed to like like no one likes to be like well i didn't know about that whether it's personal life or business life it's like well, absolutely it's, it's you... you feel like you're not important yeah. you weren't important enough to be in the know yeah exactly so no i can totally see that and so when we create these internal marketing processes the employee feels strong a stronger sense of belonging um ultimately this this produces better product productivity within your teams because they're working together for a common goal mm -hmm. and they all know what they're working towards. They all know the, the, you know, the 12 month goal, the two month goal, the, the one day goal, and they're all working collaboratively to get there. And they have a sense of my piece, my job matters to make that goal achievable. Yeah. Yeah. So you have a better sense of belonging. You definitely have a better sense of how your, your work is making a change in the business. Right. Right. And now you have buy-in. Yes. And that is the biggest part of this whole marketing, internal marketing is employee buy-in. With internal marketing, what sort of scale are, are you talking about here? Are we talking about a partnership to a, a car dealership with thousands of employees? Like how, where does this apply? Yeah. And, and there's so many ways of implementing what internal marketing is. And your team doesn't have to be, you know, 50 people, right? It, it, it can be two people and you yeah. still need internal marketing. Yeah. It can be as big as 5,000 people. It is at every scale that this is so important. Yeah. Yeah. And so let's go over some of the top benefits yeah. of what internal marketing is and why we need it. Reducing employee attrition. Now we are in a place in the market right now in this pandemic, it is impossible to find good employees. Right. We're all struggling in every industry. So right now, our main focus is to reduce employee attrition, making sure that the people we do have, we're holding on to yeah. and making them feel like they're a part of our team, making them feel valued, that their work is really important and that without their work, this part would fall apart. Right. And so they always, they, they, they have a sense of belonging and they have a sense of how important what they do is contributing to the overall goal when your organization is perceived as a, one of the great places to work, let's take Google, for example, mm -hmm. you know, people always talk about how amazing it is to work with Google because they have all these great benefits and they have the sleep pods and they have, you know, these open kitchens, like they have a very different concept than most, most yes. organizations do. Guess what? It's working in their benefit too, because mm. they feel those employees feel super lucky to be working at Google. Yeah. And there's so many people out there that would die to work at Google. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So, so Google isn't spending a ton of money uh, for hiring costs. Yeah. They, 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 they have enough people they know want to work there that they can right. fill in those positions pretty quickly. And generally speaking, they don't have to pay as much because you get to work at Google. Right, right. And, and happy employees tend to work a little bit harder too. Let's absolutely, <laughs> they do. If you enjoy you're what you're right. doing, you're going to do more of it. <laughs> exactly. So now Google's created this amazing corporate culture, this internal branding, um, this internal marketing, where people are like drinking the Kool-Aid in a yeah. really good way. They they are so proud to be there and, and being a part of the, that working cog. And so of course your attrition is gonna be low, their hiring costs are gonna be low and you're gonna get higher productivity. This all results in employee satisfaction. Right, right. <laughs> right? And there's there's this is I think one of the big ones is that a lot of times, when we are doing the work, we're, we're getting things done. Bigger corporations are failing to see how we can recognize these employees. Yes. Yes. Right. So what, what are you doing as a company to make sure that your employees are feeling appreciated, feeling that their work matters, that they're a part of, you know, the overall communication. Mm -hmm. And it's really breaking that down into, into each department as to how that communication flows. Right. So it's a bigger mandate being communicated to everybody in, in the groups that are all involved. Yeah, yeah. And generally it's not. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like something so simple. It seems like, well, if I'm, if, if we have a plan and we have a mission, of course, everyone knows it, but it's, it's not the case because most companies don't have a process in place. So when yes. you hire somebody, when you have a new hire, how are you training them 
to understand your 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 brand, what you stand for, your mission and values. It's very rare to see those in, in companies where they have that in place. So everyone coming on board totally. already is at the same place as somebody who's been there for 10 years. Totally. And it's it's very tough. Like we looked a little bit about like maybe it's a, you're a smaller business, it's a partnership, maybe you're a team of five. But when it does, when it's in that mid range, like a, a 500 person or something versus like a national brand when, when you're at that point where you're you're growing and you're so busy as a, as a business owner to oversee everything I can I can understand how the ball gets dropped quite frequently where it's like we're keep we're keeping up we're keeping up we're doing everything you know the, these things are, are kind of being met the posters are up in the hallway what yes. have you you know <laughs> yeah um, we updated them like 12 months ago yeah, totally totally we did have a meeting oh my gosh that was actually six weeks ago and this whole new product is, you know keeping your business going there are, are, are these things that seem small that do get put by the sideline and obviously like now what we're talking about there's so many important elements that highlight why it's so important that these things that might seem smaller or might seem really easy like oh send a memo send an email like they'll they'll read it and then they'll get behind it like (laughs) there's so much more attention to detail that's needed that's gonna really really help your business it's gonna push the needle for sure. Mm. It's one of those soft skills, like you know how we talk about soft skills and how important they are. This is one of those things that you would look into your business. This is, it's almost like a soft skill is how important it is. We don't have tangible things necessarily, yeah. but we also know that a happy employee is gonna have better productivity. It's gonna advocate for your brand when they're outside yeah. your four walls. Um, and they're going to create that culture internally with their peers. Yes. So if they're all on the same page, they're they're, they're collectively creating that culture yes. within those four walls, which is so, so important because it's happening organically and authentically, not forced. Yeah. Leaving people out in the dark as well can also make things go the opposite way sometimes. Employees can yeah. start to feel a little bitter, a little bit undervalued. Isolated, right? And yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's really important once, you know, let, let's take a, a, a product, for example, um, you know, businesses who are now looking at and researching a new product that they want to add into their offering. Allowing key employees into that that safe information mm-hmm. as much as you can is so important. So they know that there is something more coming. They're excited about it. So it's it's there's there's always like that balance between what can be public and what has to be internal and making sure that that information isn't leaked. But if you have the right key players in place Mm -hmm. um, and privacy doesn't become as much of an issue because they're part of, they feel like they're a part of that, that launch. Yes. Yes. Right. And so now it's finding intricate, um, safe ways of communicating that, Hey, something's coming. This is what it's about. There's more information coming. So when you do launch a new product and no one had any idea about it, guess what? They're not excited about it anymore. Yeah. They're yeah. pissed. Yeah. <laughs> They've been left out. Right? They feel left out and they feel like, well, if I'm a been a part of this company, why wasn't why was I left in the dark? Yeah. Am I not trustworthy? Yeah. Am I am I not, you know, upper management that only gets um this kind type of information. So it's really important to find ways of including everybody in the business with specific things and specific launches that are happening. Maybe it's not, you don't let go of all of the information, but it's, it's at least a, almost like a warning. Yeah. Hey, this is down, this is coming down the pipeline. Yeah. And so when it does come up, people are excited about it. They're not rejecting it because they were left out. Yes. Yes, exactly. Here are a few internal marketing strategies to increase brand advocacy. First off is educating your staff mm-hmm. on the brand. What does your brand really stand for? What does that mean? Why did you create the brand the way you did? Helping them understand the history and the mission of the company is an essential component of internal marketing strategy. It's an important step of building an inclusive company culture and helping employees feel like they're a part of something much bigger than what they know in just their role. Mm -hmm. So getting that full picture um, of the brand really gets them to buy into the brand. Right. Again, we mentioned this onboarding is a perfect time to introduce new employees to the brand and the corporate culture. So they're already prepped, their mindset is already prepped as to how the culture is already organized and how it already works. And so you have that buy-in right at the beginning when they first start, they're not learning it. They, they know it when they enter. Yes. And they also now feel a part of the group, but they have the secret sauce. They've, they, they all know the same information. They're caught up. You know, this one sounds silly, uh, but it, it makes 
it makes a lot of sense. Um, little things like freebies, like branded sweatshirts and water bottles and um, specific things with a brand. Employees really love that stuff. Yes. They love that they're a part of that brand that now they feel all included. They're included in that brand because they're, they're, they're sporting the t-shirt and they're sporting the, the water bottles. Um, those little pieces mm -hmm. make a huge difference because again, it's another aspect of buying into the brand. Yes. Yes. Beyond the onboarding experience, brand education can help employees stay up to date with the current evolution of your brand. Our brands are evolving daily with the, our brands are evolving daily with the market demands. And so keeping them in the loop as to how you're evolving and changing, you can even get their input on, on and their specific job as, as to what that looks like with the evolution. Right. And so including them into those, those new plans moving forward also creates that feeling of inclusivity. Right, right. Employee recognition. Everyone loves this. Everyone loves a little little pat on the back. Come on now. That's you know, as humans, that's actually sometimes that's all we need. Yes. We think as managers, you know, if someone's upset or someone is about to leave, it's it's a, it's always do, got to do with finances. Like mm. how can I pay you more? What what can I give you more? I would say in my experience, 80% of the time it's that person doesn't feel appreciated. Yes. They don't seem, they don't feel seen. They don't feel appreciated. They don't feel like their, their work matters. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have the employee that's, that's going along, doing everything perfectly forever and ever and ever. And you just, you kind of just assume they're happy because they're and doing everything. Yeah. It's like, take the time to acknowledge everyone, whether they're struggling, whether they're taking, they're finding everything really easy. What, you know, just, Find everyone where they're at and acknowledge what they're doing for your business. Yes, it goes a long way. A handwritten note about, you know, something an employee has gone over and beyond their job description goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, a quick chat in the office saying, hey, you know, what? I noticed you did this. Thank you. This is how it made a difference. And so letting them know how their job made an impact. Right. Um, this is this is generally more larger companies are doing employee award shows, um, but the smaller businesses have to remember that it's it doesn't have to be an entire show. Yeah, it can yeah, be yeah. something that employees can work towards. So every year you set you know five um, awards that you can give. You know maybe best employee. Um, you know, actually don't scratch. Okay, not best employee. Um, <laughs> That's awful. Um, the other four worst employees. Right? <laughs> All I can think Especially of is when the there's office. only like three or four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just award myself best employee. I'm going to make myself a trophy best employee. I was the best the employee year. this month, everybody, just so you know. So try to catch up. Uh, so Monica, who decides you're the best employee? I do. Yeah. The fact that I'm the only employee doesn't have anything to do with it. Uh, and that's the thing though that's how important it is though is just showing some kind of recognition and whether that's that's something you decide at the beginning of the year these are the four awards we're going to give out this yeah. year and it's it's based on x y and z give them the kpis so it gives them something to work to work towards yes yes right and and it can even instead of being a yearly you can even do a monthly the smaller ones totally totally well it, it comes back to that sort of old school you know there's the photo on the wall of the employee of the month and and all of that kind of stuff so People. You know, we look at that sometimes and we cringe, but yeah. we actually don't understand that stuff like that. Maybe not to that point actually works. Yes. And and it does. It mean something to someone like when someone's essentially working for another company, they are giving up their time and a huge portion of their their life to to dedicate to you and, and the growth of your business. So it's really, really important to acknowledge that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what's the saying? A family that dances together stays together. It's like employees who feel appreciated stay longer. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And they give their best productivity and, and, and there it means something to them. Yeah, yeah. There's there's actually um, statistics here that say uh, that incentive programs see a higher employee performance rate. So a little bit of competitive spirit in the office never hurts <laughs> never hurts right um so i mean our our the way we work over the last two years has drastically changed mm -hmm. and sometimes mm -hmm. creating a corporate culture has become a little bit more difficult because yeah. we're not always together a lot of people are working from home 
or you know completely in different countries yeah um so creating a corporate culture you're like well how do we do that we're all in different offices we're all in different locations um and if, a big way of doing that is using integrated communication apps like slack like trello um everyone a lot of people use the google chat on their g suite using those technologies to communicate the mandates and the goals and the, and the brand is key especially during this time because that is really the only way you can create some type of corporate culture yes it's the water cooler <laughs> it's the it is it has become the water cooler you're right <laughs> just log in go have a little chit chat on the <laughs> yep <laughs> so true and it almost sense it, it creates that sense of like uh relationships within the time within the workspace yeah. we don't have that anymore yeah no we're probably a lot more productive because we're not having those water cool conversations yeah, however yeah. how important are those to bonding with other people on our team absolutely bonding activities yeah. besides water cooler <laughs> <laughs> This is a big one. We always see each other in a work type environment and talking about work things, projects that we don't get to see the other side of people. What yeah. do they do for fun? How are they? What, what, what kind of silly jokes would they tell when we're outside of work? Yeah. And so yeah. bonding activities, um, team builders are just so, so important to allow us to see the human side of all of the people that are on our team. Yeah. Make friends with your crew, like have, have a work family. Absolutely. And you know, when you do have that relationship internally with your team, you're willing to be a much more of a team player. Yeah. You want to help your teammates out and you know, they're going to help you out when you need it. It's yes. these bonding activities are creating friendships. And when you have friendships within your work, you're willing to go over and beyond for them. Yeah. I Every, mean, you know, you might be thinking, hey, Monica, that's great. We're, you know, we're, we're talking about all the things we, we should do internally, but is that going to change my KPIs? How do I track this? Is this going to make things better? How do I know? And I know we've mentioned this a couple of times, but it's definitely going to come back in your employee productivity. Right. And that's something you might not see in the first three months, but I guarantee after six months of this change in mindset, you're going to see employee productivity. Yeah, you're yeah. going to see that go up. You're going to see more team players. You're going to see people who are feeling more a sense of belonging in the workplace and they want to see where their work is going and it's how it's actually making an impact. The other thing you're going to see is better customer experiences. Mm. A happy employee yeah. is always going to treat the end user much better because yes. they want to create the same experience they feel in their workplace outside to the world. Right. Right. I've had right? experiences where I walk into somewhere and I'll literally be like, whoa, there's job satisfaction right yes. there. Where there's someone just standing there and they just are hating every moment that they're doing. It's like, yep, clearly loves their job. Right? And does, as you as a customer, does that make you really feel warm and fuzzy right? going into that that place no totally and, and and it also it's like it's a bit of a turn off for the the company as a whole because then you're like well how are they treating this person for them to be so miserable i mean of course people have bad days but to be like okay and then you go somewhere and it's like you'll have an employee who's like la, 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 super happy really ready to help you knows the product understand what's going on and it's like okay wow this was a great experience right and those are your brand advocates yeah. that are coming in terms because they're happy with their job they feel like they're in the know those are those are the companies that let their employees know what is the promotion of the month yeah i mean emma how many times have we had clients where uh, we're running promotions for them and the employees are like oh i didn't even know that we were offering that and and the customer just asked me about it and now they're running to management and figuring out where this promotion came from that disconnect hurts your business Huge. it hurts your revenue and it hurts your profitability it can be so easily dealt with so easily Yes, if if corporations, businesses, small to medium, all sizes could understand how internal marketing is just as important as your external marketing, yeah. it would be a part of everyone's plan. Online interactions, are employees communicating with each other on a chat program, on, on anything like that? Make sure that there is some type of program that people could com communicate internally with. And every chat program is different, but if you can see the KPIs of your chat program of how often employees are chatting, you'll know that this internal marketing is getting to the next level when you see more interactions mm -hmm. on your chat. Mm -hmm because people are now leaning on each other more. They're asking questions. They're working as a team because they know that they're working together for a common goal. I love it. So there's, there's lots of things that are really actionable here to really change trackable results. Yeah, absolutely. Not to mention employee retention. Yeah. That's a big one for, for, for businesses, especially when the marketplace looks like this right now, yeah. and it's really hard to find good talent. Totally. We want to keep the people that we have really, really happy and making sure that they're motivated um, and understand what, again, that common goal is. Yeah.
And this is all something that you can help with over at Digital Monk, right? Absolutely. We, we would do a full audit of your business as where you are with your internal marketing and then create a strategy to fill in those gaps. All right. So I'll put all of the, uh, the information in the show notes of how to contact you if, if there is anyone listening that is interested in finding out how they can streamline their internal marketing strategy. And as always, Monica is here to help you with that. So good luck and, and really uh, dig into building your team and making sure that your mission and and your branding is is all aligned with with your team and that everyone's happy and doing their best work for you thank you so much for listening to today's episode be sure to like share and subscribe if you enjoyed what you heard you can also reach out to us by emailing monica at digitalmonkmarketing.com or follow digital monk marketing on all social media platforms thanks again and we'll be back with lots more for you very soon